Hello, my name is Thomas Wilson. I am a professional visual effects artist who is starting to dabble in Unreal Engine a little bit. So I've always been a big fan of video games and this year I picked up what has turned out to be one of my very favorites. Today I'm going to talk about the video game Hades. Hades is my first roguelike. I'll go ahead and put that on the table first. I've always had difficulty with very challenging games like roguelikes or even the FromSoft games, for example. But I have to say, Hades really spoke to me for a number of factors. And I think one of the reasons it turned out to be a very successful first roguelike for someone like myself, or maybe even for people who are big fans of the genre, is the way that it uses its format to tell story. And for me, that's very compelling because as someone who works in film and television, uh, story and narrative is a big, compelling ingredient for me to continue playing a video game. And so to see something like Hades, where you die a lot, actually use the concept of death in the story I found very interesting. You play as Zagreus, who is the son of Hades. This is an interesting character because you don't see him that much, or he's not that well known within the mythos as other characters. And this, I think, was a smart move on the part of Supergiant to use this character because it allowed you to see a lot of the mythology and a lot of the dramas and conflicts of the different characters through the lens of another character. This contemporary adaptation of the Greek mythology is something that has seemed to become a bit more popular lately. One of my favorite authors working right now is Madeline Miller, who's done just this with her books Kirki and Songs of Achilles, which are two amazing books that put a contemporary lens on some stories that we've heard before, but not quite in the way that they write them. And this is the same for that of Zagreus and Hades and Nyx and Orpheus and many of the characters who you will come across in this game and its beautiful narrative. Whether it's stopping to have a quick chat with Achilles about his mortal experience and how it compares to now working for Hades in the Underworld, or having a quick tit for tat with Thanatos while you battle it out on the lands of Asphodel. The many encounters that you have with different characters in this game change each time you die and each time you, you pass through a different escape attempt. This, again, keeps the story moving forward. It keeps the uh, punishment of death less severe. Each time you die, you are encouraged to move forward. Not only is the writing, so good for these characters but the art the art and the craft of everything is is top notch for this indie developer the illustrations of the characters that come up whenever you enter into conversation are beautiful and dare i say quite attractive most of the time and as you have these repeated escape attempts you start to realize that especially in a year like 2020 where quarantining has been a big aspect of many people's lives where our normal day-to-day -day is not the same that it used to be, the repetition of escape attempts um, becomes a bit of a catharsis because you start to realize there's a reflection upon the way that you're playing the game and the way that you might be experiencing your day-to-day. -day. Maybe you wake up, you try something new, you try to have a conversation with a new person, and you try to get a little bit better and move on to the next day. The portrayal of the characters is not only true, very true to that of the Greek myths that I've spent the past few years reading. And in being true to those characters, notions of gender fluidity and sexuality are, are taken with a lot of care in the portrayal of these characters within their narrative. But ultimately, this is a video game, and there's quite a lot of video game that you experience along with the story. And that gameplay itself is always exciting. There are different weapons to use in the game. There are six, ultimately. And the ones that you get good with will vary depending on how you pass through your run. Because each run, you encounter boons. These boons that you receive from the gods trying to help you in your escape from Hades um, ultimately change constantly and, and diversify your gameplay so that each run is almost like playing a completely different video game. And even though you can learn from each run and learn from each boon that you use, maybe you pick two combinations that don't work and the next time you'll find 
a way that those combinations do work with a different weapon. Maybe you have a weapon that you didn't think you liked. For example, I never thought I would finish a run with the bow, and the bow actually ended up being my first completion of a run, despite the shield being my favorite weapon in the game. So you never know. And ultimately, this diversity of gameplay makes it less of a punishment each time you die, because each time you go back, you know you're going to have a positive, progressive experience through the game. You just have to adapt each time. It's a it's a game that about adaptation, and maybe this is what all roguelikes are about. I will find out because, again, this being my first roguelike, I'm excited to try more. And speaking of punishment, this is not an easy game. You will die many, many times. And again, you are progressing through the story each time you die. But I also have to say the punishment for death is not as severe as it is in other games. One factor towards this is that Supergiant put a very smart handicap system in the game called God Mode. With God Mode, each time you die, your damage resistance goes up just a little bit each time. So for somebody like me who has a lot of trouble with challenging games, uh, I happen to have some mild arthritis in my right thumb, and this makes it very challenging for me to hit certain types of response windows in many games. But in a game like this, where you can constantly modulate your health, modulate your damage output, and then also have this progressive increase of damage resistance, there's always a sense of moving forward. And having that along with the story is something that kept me really moving through this roguelike all the way until my multiple run completions and eventually the credits. And this wouldn't be a proper Hades review without talking about one of the most impressive and beautiful aspects of the game, which is the voice recording and the music. The music especially is the thing that I found lingered with me well after I finished the game. Um, I immediately downloaded the soundtrack and continued to listen to the different songs. There is a moment when you're in Asphodel and you turn the corner and you hear Eurydice singing a song. And it's one of the most, I think, captivating musical moments I have experienced in a game, not only in 2020, but maybe ever. Darren Korb, who acted as the music and audio aficionado of the game deserves a lot of credit for his craft and so much of what makes this game experience so much of what it is. Um, he not only did the voice recording for a number of characters, including the narrator and Zagreus, but he did all of the music and the music is something. Um, I hope those who did play the game and enjoyed it would like this review, and I hope those who haven't tried the game will definitely go out and do it. This is definitely going to go at the top of my list as one of the best games of 2020, and I hope everyone gets a chance to play it and support Supergiant Games because they make some good stuff. Have a good day and happy gaming!